Welcome to Memorial Cooking Innovations. I'm Tim Scallon, registered dietitian, and with me today is Chef Mike Hodgkins. Welcome again to the show, Mike. Well, thank you, Tim, for the intro. I'm glad to be back. Well, okay, so Chef Mike, in my ongoing chef apprenticeship, mm -hmm. uh, this time we're learning how to alter a recipe to improve its eye appeal and its nutritional value. So what are we cooking today? Well, today, you know, when I came here to East Texas, uh, they had something here it's called chicken spaghetti. Mm -hmm. I'd never seen or heard of it before, of course. And uh, I kind of like it quite a bit. It's a great and, dish. Yeah, it is. And I thought that maybe we could make that a little more healthier so that people on special diets are just a, another health, healthier dish to eat. So the traditional chicken spaghetti that we all know here is like mm -hmm. a casserole that right. we smother in uh, cheddar cheese. Right. And of course, anytime we cover anything up with cheese, it's high mm -hmm. cholesterol and high fat and high sodium. And so what you're suggesting is let's alter this recipe, less cheese? Yeah, uh, you take out the cheese but whenever you take out flavor, you don't want to have a pasty spaghetti. Yeah. So we're going to enhance it with some fresh herbs and some okay. fresh vegetables and uh, hopefully make it a very healthy dish. You and know what? Miss a bit. This, this is classic memorial cooking innovations. Right. We're, we're uh, uh, taking out the bad flavors and bringing in, replacing them with good. Yeah, that's right. Okay, well, let's get started. Okay, I got this pretty well warmed up now. And I'm going to put in a little bit of the olive oil just to get it started. Okay. Starting with our extra virgin olive oil. Yeah. Let that sit for a second. And, and so in, in this dish, we start it just like we do so many others. We start with a saute, huh? Right. Right. You want to, it's almost always with uh, any kind of sauces, casseroles, soups. Mm -hmm. You want to saute your vegetables. Uh, again, that why and how we do that is another whole show yeah, uh, yeah. but uh, you want to blend the flavors together so the and quick version is is you're just putting together uh, vegetables and flavors in order to to blend those flavors right right so so would it be accurate to describe this as Oops, your your uh, your your building a flavor base for this dish right it uh, in fact the real name or one of the names that people use is a mirepoix and basically it uh, when you saute a vegetable you're releasing a gas okay. and the gas is kind of an acidy taste to it okay that and so when you saute that's why sauteed onions are not as biting as a they soften, regular onion they, they soften, soften and, the gas, and, and it flavor. sweetens up okay so okay. that's what we're trying to do is going to go and cook these together and bring out the sweetness okay and the more flavor Okay, Tim, I think the chicken's about ready. I'm going to start adding the vegetables now. You know, Chef Mike, when we, since I've been working with chefs, uh, uh, and you all talk about blending flavors, I tend to put that into a context, I guess, that I can understand. It's like, to me, blending those flavors is kind of like an orchestra. And each of the individual flavors is like another note. And so I want all those notes to fit right. Does that sound like a good analogy? Yeah, it, it really is, Tim. It, uh, you figure if you're an orchestra and you have a sour note, yeah. that'd be like having an ingredient that's got a sour taste. So it, you, you really need all the ingredients to be fresh and healthy and to come together to make the final dish what you'd want it to be. And you don't want any one note to be too loud. Right. Because it, it won't, it, it won't it'll, it'll detract rather than contribute to the balance. Right, very much. Okay. Uh, one thing I'd like to uh, interject here a little bit along that same line, if you notice, uh, I've had a lot of the vegetables, the peppers and the celery and the onions are all diced, mm -hmm. but the carrots are shredded. Okay, why'd you do that? Well, the carrots are shredded so that the cooking time will be about the same. Carrots oh. take a real long time to cook. Okay. And it just you just want to make sure everything comes out about the same way. Okay. So it doesn't get too mushy. I don't okay. need all these carrots. And on the garlic, I've got that minced. Okay. Because for the same for the we don't same want reason. to have a whole hunk of garlic. You yeah. Know, in so your spoon, yeah. Right. Yeah. So you just have that minced. So you're distributing the garlic. Right. Okay. And on this other side, you have mushrooms are gonna shrink. Oh, so, so you, you got want your mushrooms big. to be a little bigger. Okay. So when it gets all together, everything will cook down the same and hopefully nothing will hide anything else. Well, you know, Mike, as we were talking about doing this show, I, uh, I brought from my herb garden 
uh, some fresh herbs. And mm -hmm. you know, when I open this, I, I just, I can, this aroma just hits me. Smell that, yes. Mike. Mm. It does. It smells like yeah. spring. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so could we use some of these herbs in the, in the dish? Oh, yes. I have them um, already prepared here, ready okay. for it. Okay. All yeah. right. Okay. But I'm going to hold off on those because I like, to me, fresh herbs can have a tendency, not all herbs, but most herbs, uh, they'll get a little bitter. A little yeah, bitter? A little bitter. If you put them in too soon, too soon. or they could dissipate altogether where you lose everything. So with fresh herbs being so delicate, I usually like to add those two at the end. Okay, now is that a, a is that a, you're speaking of a saute right now, but could we uh, apply that rule to let's say making a soup? Yes, I would. I think any soup, sauces, anything that takes a long time to cook. Pot of beans. Yeah, pot of beans, the same idea. Now if you're doing scrambled eggs, you want to add a little basil, poof, put them right in, no problem. Yeah, because they anything, cook fast. It cooks fast and it'll be done. But with a soup or anything, or a sauce of any kind, I prefer to have them come in late. See, that's a good tip. And, you know, when I made this pot of soup this uh, last weekend, I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. And so I would do better to get all the ingredients cooked, because I had carrots, celery, right. onion, get, get the ingredients cooked, and then add my herbs and spices. Right. Okay, right. all right. And then after that blends for a little bit, then I'm ready to taste. Then you're ready to taste. Okay, good. All right. Well, Tim, I'm going to add the cream of mushroom soup now. Okay. And just to let the audience know that this really eliminates the hottest part of the recipe. Now, what do you mean when you say that? Well, usually in the recipe, you'll call for a cream sauce of some kind. Oh, okay. And whether it be a chicken-based sauce or a white cream sauce, whatever. And that's when you get into a little more difficulty. Using a canned soup, that's your thickening agent, and you're also enhancing the flavor a little bit. And uh, it, it comes out just fine. So this recipe is a perfect balance between convenience food and fresh ingredients. Right, because up to this point, it's just cut, chop, and throw in the pot. Now you just add the soup for a thickening agent. Okay. Now, the only thing I want to caution our audience on is, is that any time that uh, we add a canned soup, we're potentially adding a high-sodium ingredient. And so we always have to think, oh, canned soup, high-sodium. How are mm -hmm. we going to do that? In developing this dish, the use of a canned soup increases the sodium content. Initially, we chose to use Healthy Request Cream of Chicken Soup. And one might think that the name Healthy Request would mean that the soup is low in sodium. Well, actually, there are 410 milligrams of sodium in a serving, and there are two and a half servings in this can. So we're adding 1,025 milligrams of sodium to the dish. Now this will be divided by the number of servings in the dish, which in this case is six. So this one recipe item contributes 171 milligrams of sodium in a serving. Well, that's high when you consider that our goal for the meal is 500 milligrams of sodium or less. Now I know this is a lot of numbers, but these are numbers that are important to understand because we all know that sodium increases our risk for hypertension, high blood pressure, and heart disease. Recall that a healthy guideline for sodium intake is 1,500 to 2,000 milligrams per day. Here's where learning to alter recipes is important. What purpose does the soup serve? Well, it replaces making a cream sauce from scratch and the sauce serves as a conduit of flavor, texture, and color for the pasta. When I went shopping, I couldn't find a low-sodium cream of chicken soup, but I did find a low-sodium cream of mushroom soup. Hmm, our recipe calls for chicken, mushrooms, and a cream sauce. What if we used cream of mushroom soup instead of cream of chicken soup? The low sodium cream of mushroom soup has only 45 milligrams of sodium in the entire can. So I just found a way to bring convenience to the preparation of this dish without adding too much salt. And in so doing, I'm restoring the balance of flavors in the dish. The range of flavors created by the fresh herbs and spices 
are not covered up by too much salt. Okay, Tim, now let's add the spices. Okay, so what yeah. you got? Well, we got a little bit of oregano. Okay. A little rosemary. I mean, sorry, yeah, rosemary. And you dice that rosemary really fine. Yeah, okay. you want it, You don't want to have big hunks in your, you know, you get big hunks. Well, and you know how rosemary has this long stem on it. I'm going to get one of these out just to... Uh, and so when you mm -hmm. dice that, uh, do you use the stem or do you pull these leaves off and then dice I, I always like to pull the leaves off. I okay. know it's a real pain. Some people don't, but okay. I don't like that woody piece. Okay. It's like chewing on a toothpick. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, good. Okay. So I got the rosemary, the thyme, got a touch of sage. Just a touch of sage. And you know, sage is one of those... Uh, spices and I kind of learned this from my Italian son-in-law and his family you know the Italians use sage in a lot of dishes we mm -hmm. kind of underutilize right. this herb uh, they'll take uh, fresh sage and saute it with butter and then serve that on a chicken breast for example and it is just delicious mm -hmm. yeah I'd, I've never had it but it, I can see Oh, it's got a nice flavor. Oh, everybody loves it at Thanksgiving. Well, that's why was, that's just mm -hmm. what I was about to say. We tend to think of sage as just a, something I use at Thanksgiving. Yeah. Going to give it a little bit of kick here with some cayenne pepper. Okay. You know, and that's another one. Uh, you know, in this part of the world, cayenne, how could we live without it, huh? Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's very true. Well, it's like I said before about poblano peppers. Yeah. I just love them tremendously. Yeah, yeah. Now we're going to do a little bit of salt and pepper, but... I think I finally, in my years, I figured out what a pinch of salt is. Okay. I was, I was working one time with a chef, and when he did it, I didn't realize what he was doing, but we were making a fruit sauce. Okay. And uh, I wish I could remember. I think, believe it was a raisin sauce, and he had me taste it, just like I'll have you taste this. Okay. And uh, he put in six grains of salt. Literally. Six, count them out <laughs> in his hand. Six grains of salt huh. into about two cups of sauce. Huh. And you could really tell the difference. You okay. could really, so I consider a pinch of salt is six grains of salt. It really is just a pinch. Yes. Well, okay, so Mike, for, for those, uh, uh, you know, in our audience who don't cook all the time, mm -hmm. the question is, how do I know how much of each spice to use? Well, uh, because the first, there's two rules. Okay. One, go by the recipe. Okay, so start with the recipe. Right. Okay. Two, you can't take it out. Oh. So, in order, you put in what the recipe says, and then a lot of recipes will actually say to taste. Okay. Put in minute amounts, a little bit at a time. And remember that if you taste a sauce or anything two or three times, your taste buds will get accustomed to that flavor. Yes. And so that you won't be able to tell the difference. It's like, you know, cooking a frog in a pot, you bring the pot to a slow boil and the frog never knows it's got hot. Yeah. Uh, it's, this is the same idea. You put in a little salt, little salt, little salt, all of a sudden it's too salty. I see. You don't taste it. Because you've been tasting you've that been, all you're along. You're accustomed. So, so, so how do you overcome that? Well, you got two ways. You can do like they do in the French with the aperitif, get a cracker or something else that's completely different. Cleanse my palate. Cleanse your palate. Okay. Or get someone else to taste it. Okay, all yeah. right, here, come and taste this. And since I don't have any aperitif right now, yeah. I'll, I'll let you try it. Okay, all right. This is always my favorite part. Okay. You know, this and is one of you can tell the, me if we need salt, pepper, or whatever. This is one of the great uh, things about being a dietitian that gets to work with chefs. <laughs> there you go. Mike, that's really good. Yeah, do you taste all the little, the pepper and the bobanos and... All that, the cheese is, can how's the cheese? Is cheese still there? It is. And it we're is. using a, so much less than what you would in a casserole, so much less. You know, I'm, I'm, tasting, I'm tasting almost everything. Now, my, you know, mm -hmm. my palate's not as trained as yours, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I'm tasting it. Yeah, yeah. And, and you used a convenience white sauce to make yes. this. Right. But the flavor is, in, is how you built it. To, to combine right. with that white and sauce. And that's just a matter of slicing and dicing. There's no work to it. I mean, you, if you can use a can opener, you can make this. All right, okay. Okay, Tim, well, it's all ready to plate up now. Okay. And I just wanna show you a, a way that I serve it. It's not really a traditional way. Usually in the traditional way, they do it as a casserole. Yeah. Uh, smothered in cheese, of course. Yeah. 
But uh, what I would like to do is uh, serve it as you would a regular plate of spaghetti. Okay, so why do you, why do you want to serve chicken spaghetti this way? Well, uh, three reasons. Uh, one is the spaghetti will stay on date. I really okay. don't like mushy spaghetti, and when you cook it in a casserole, that's it usually it comes out cooks gummy. It to death. Very gummy. Yeah. And uh, the presentation, I appeal, okay. I think is just as good. Okay. And you didn't use very much cheese in this recipe. That's, that's the winner. That's that, the third that's reason. The winner. That's the major reason. We don't use as much cheese. So when we reduce the cheese in this recipe, we're reducing sodium, cholesterol, and saturated fat. Right. And now you're really showing how to make this dish. So, so this isn't just a chicken casserole anymore. No. It can, it's, it's really a very nice presentable dish that you could have at a fine dining pot, you know, fine dining. Uh, you know, a nice dinner out, uh, I mean, at your home. Uh, it's more than just a casserole for the family. But it's still that it's delicious, healthy. that delicious comfort food that all of us here in East Texas love as chicken spaghetti. Yeah. Well, so today we've learned how to alter recipes in order to improve their flavor and eye appeal. Lowering sodium and fat content of recipes does not have to diminish the flavor. Herbs and spices can create a full range of flavors when we do not overpower them with salt. And we learned how to turn a traditional chicken spaghetti casserole into an upscale meal. Chef Mike, I just want to thank you so much for uh, sharing your expertise with us today. Well, I thank you and it's been a pleasure being here. You know, together we are changing the world one bite at a time. Right. Memorial Cooking Innovations is made possible through the generous efforts of Brookshire Brothers, a celebration of family and community, CHI St. Luke's Memorial, the Polk Education Center, Sodexo Food Service, and the City of Lufkin, KLTX Channel 15. <laughs>